guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am wearing my plant lady shirt because I want to share a plant haul with you guys. It's been a few months since I've showed you any of the new plants, but that doesn't mean I haven't been buying some. So I've probably got about 12 or so to show you that I've compiled in that last like two months or so. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. I am going to start with the one that is the most exciting to me, and that's the one I have sitting right here. So I picked this up at a townwide yard sale over the weekend for $4. I am not 100% on what it is. I have some ideas, and I'll talk about that. Um, I asked her what it was, and she said a Diffenbachia. I, I really don't think it's that. I've never seen This was vining when I got it. I'll stick a picture in. Uh, this is it after I cut it apart. But it was vining, and I've never seen a Diffenbachia do that. My intention is I'm leaning towards some kind of Syngonium, because if you ignore like these little parts of the leaves, it looks exactly like a Syngonium-type plant. Plus, it was vining. But anyways, so it's got like the regular-type leaf, and then it's got these here, where they're actually like part of the same leaf, and they kind of just turn over and make it look like three. And you can see in some of the smaller ones, it hasn't done that yet. So eventually what happens is those kind of grow out and then twist. So I had to do some research and I've got maybe two ideas, but like I said, I'm not 100% positive. So I looked up and there's something called a Syngonium Trileaf Wonder and there's something called a Syngonium, Syngonium Oritum. And it looks like it could be either one of those. But um, I don't know, I'm just really excited. So I paid $4 for it and I've got five mason jars right now full of cuttings because what I like to do if a plant is kind of leggy and overgrown, I like to take cuttings and I'll root them and then I'll fill out the top of this so it'll be a really full plant. It's like starting with a brand new full plant. Now that cutting method is something I'm doing with this plant also. So this is just a regular philodendron. Um, this is a really common plant, but I don't have one until now. So I got this one for my grandma. She was going on vacation and I was taking care of her plant. She said anything, if there's one plant she loves most, it's her Norfolk pine. So she said you can have anything you want except for the Norfolk pine. So she had a couple baskets of this. I took one basket and what I did was I took all kinds of cuttings because it had about I think I've got probably maybe six or seven strands here. It was about six or seven strands that were seriously like taller than me, about six feet tall. So what I did is I cut them and then I made multiple cuttings on each of those. I probably have another five jars worth of propagations. So what I'm gonna do when they root, I'm gonna go in and kind of just fill in the top of this and make it more full and bushy and less kind of bald at the top. This is just in a Ray Dunn planter and I turn them backwards the size and the shape of these is really perfect. I like the shiny ceramic and I like how it's kind of uneven and like um, it looks handmade and then the legs are cute. And I just drill a hole in the bottom with a diamond drill bit. So the next one I wanna show you guys is this Hoya. And you have seen this before when it was just cuttings. This is one of the ones I got at that plant swap I went to back in May and I cut all the pieces up to kind of make a smaller, more compact plant. This one took forever to root for me. I don't know whether it's my, like my light, my situation, but Hoyas for me are really slow growing and it was really slow to root. But this is what I have now and I'm really happy with that. It's also another Mary Dunn planter just turned backwards. And then, um, Unfortunately, I do rotate my plants, so eventually the word will have to face out for a week or so. But what I do is, if I notice they start to lean, I will rotate them. This one's a slower growing plant, so I didn't really worry about that. But certain plants, like my Monstera, I turn that guy once every week. I do like a complete rotation. That way it doesn't lean too far to the side. But there's that guy. The next one I wanna show you, I picked up on my birthday weekend and this is a type of Ripsalis. It is called, I wrote this down, a Ripsalis horrida is the official name, but they call it a mouse tail cactus. And I'm pretty much drawn to any type of Ripsalis. I just like the way they look. They're almost kind of fuzzy. They always look kind of just wild and unruly. And this guy is just in a little planter. This planter is one of those ones they sell at Home Depot where it's got like the wooden feet on it and I just kind of popped it apart and drilled a hole. 
This is actually two pots from Home Depot. Sometimes if they have two in those little teeny like three or four dollar pots, I'll get both of them to make a fuller plant right off the bat. So that's what I did here. And I plant these guys in a similar soil to the Hoyas. I do, because they're both epiphytic, which means like in nature, they would grow on trees and stuff. They wouldn't be planted in the ground like we're doing. So what I do is I do 50% um, just regular houseplant soil. I do 25% perlite and then I do 25% orchid bark to kind of break it up and make it have a lot of space and aeration. For me, that works pretty good. And as I'm saying this, I just knocked a piece out of the pot here. Um, but these will actually root pretty easy. Pieces will just fall off and lay on the bottom and root. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is another one that I'm like super excited about. This is a lipstick plant, but it's a black pagoda lipstick plant. So it's got this really neat patterning on the leaves. And then the underside of the leaves is like a really pretty purple. I saw this first on Kelly Ellen's channel. Um, and she was doing a house tour. She showed this plant. And immediately I wrote down the name to add to my wish list. So it's about a week later. And I go to Terrain in Connecticut. Because now anytime I go to Connecticut, I have to go to Terrain. And I'm going through the store. I didn't find anything in the greenhouse that thrilled me that I needed. I mean, if money was not an issue, I would have had everything. But, you know, at the same time, I want to kind of pick things that are special. So I'm in the part where they keep all the pots and the home decor and the plant stands. And they had a whole rack of these guys. So then it took me another, I don't know, 20 minutes or so to decide which one is the best. Because all you obsessive plant people like me, you'll set them on the, or I don't know, I do. I set them on the ground and I have to look from every angle. And then I have to hold them up because if it's going to be elevated on a shelf, I want to know that it's going to look good draping down. Anyways, this is the one I ended up with. And it was $25. It was a birthday trip, so I was fine paying that. And I'm really excited to kind of just see how this one does. Okay, so next I've got a little selection here of four cactus and succulents. And these all came from my neighbor. So what we do a lot of times, if we have things we don't want, we'll put them out on the curb. Like when I um, redid the bedroom and I got the new headboard, I changed it out in late December, early January. And because it's cold, I waited and held the old one in the basement. That way, if I changed my mind or, you know, didn't like the new one, I could go back easily. But once I realized that I was keeping the new one and the old one was just taking up space and it was warm enough, I put it out. Our neighbor ended up taking that. So he ended up stopping by and telling us how he made good use of it. And he had picked up some plants from one of his clients and would I want them. So my husband, of course, said yes. And I'm going to show you guys what they are. So the first is this fairy castle cactus. And... I'm trying to make that focus. There we go. These are pretty common. You see these a lot of times at like Lowe's and Home Depot. This next one is a thimble cactus. And this is just like a really cute little guy. And he's in one of those pots I like where it's kind of wider than it is tall almost. This next little one, I have no idea what it is. So I'm kind of interested to see if it grows. Maybe it'll be easier to identify it. Now, all these have been repotted because a lot of them were in a glazed pot. And I keep most of my cacti and succulents in terracotta. That way they'll dry out a lot quicker. I feel like it's a lot less easy to overwater them if you've got them in terracotta. So I kind of got them home and did that right away. This last one is a Haworthia, a zebra Haworthia. Now this was one of those ones which I'm guessing was the brand Living Trends where they put them in those really pretty white like little potters or fancy things with no drainage. So he was in wet soil and it was pretty much red. So I don't know if you're like, I'll put that picture up again. I don't know if it will truly show it. But a lot of times succulents and cacti, if they get too much sun exposure and if they're one that doesn't do well with it, they will turn red as like a stress reaction. I think it's called the anthocyanins in the plant. Um, but I mean, like science aside, I figured I would try and pull it out of the sun because a Haworthia can do with a little less sun than some of your other succulents. So I pulled it out of the sun. It is already starting to turn back to green, which is making me happy. And then I pulled off all the little dead bits because there were some dried up pieces. And I'm hoping that I caught it in time that, you know, that it didn't get any root rot from the wet soil. So I'm really excited to kind of see how this guy is going to do. 
And if you look in here, it's already got some pups. And then this is something I started doing recently too. You'll probably, I don't know if you can see without me tipping it completely. I started top dressing them all with black aquarium gravel, just a thin layer, all of my indoor and outdoor succulents. And the only reason I do it is because when you water them, and I do a 50% perlite solution mixed with their soil, the perlite all floats to the top, gets stuck on the plant, and then you have like that unsightly line of perlite around your plant. So I figured I'm going to top it with the rocks and see what happens. I can always pull it off if it doesn't. But I've had it going this way probably for about a month, a month and a half, and I haven't lost any plants. So the soil is still drying out effectively, but it looks a lot better than having perlite all over the place. And I went with black because I wanted it to look just like dirt. I didn't want anything fancy or bright. So this next one, I really enjoy this plant, but the place I got it from kind of gave me the heebies. So this is a pregnant onion plant. And I heard a story about one of these once, and I cannot for the life of me remember where, whether it was a podcast that I was listening to or some book I read, but somebody had seen it in a grocery store and that was like their first plant. They spent like their last grocery money or something on it and brought it home. And that was like their first plant that got them into the love of plants. And I can't for the life of me remember where I heard that story. But ever since I heard it, I've been thinking, you know, if I found one, I would get one. So what happens is eventually little onion piece, little onions will grow on the mother one and then fall off and propagate. So this guy was $3 and I got it from a place called Cactus Man. So this place had like tables and tables of small cacti. I had a bunch of large ones, but it was all kind of like in somebody's backyard. And I followed the hours posted and I went there and there was nobody there, not even like an owner. So I was looking around and I felt kind of like strange. Like I feel like I'm trespassing because nobody's come out and said hi. And there's all kinds of little buildings that sell like candles and other things. And eventually... The owner did drive over and, you know, tell us all the little pots are only $3. So I paid $3 for this. And then a true cactus was $4. So, I mean, the prices were amazing. And I will definitely go back there. Um, but I will make sure that my husband's with me because it just felt kind of weird walking through somebody's backyard and outbuildings alone. Um, so, yeah. But really excited about that guy. I'm kind of excited to see when it starts to pop out baby onions. So next up, I have another Haworthia, and this one I picked up at Home Depot. I went down to Newton, New Jersey, which isn't that far from me, but their Home Depot and Lowe's have really nice plant sections. I think our Lowe's is remodeling theirs. I've noticed them kind of rearranging things and making it look more like the other ones. But so far, these in Newton, these are my favorite um, Home Depot and Lowe's plant set selections. So I just picked this guy up. He was $8.00. This is one of those pots that came from Michael's last spring when they started to do like the rustic looking pots. And I like these because they already come with drainage in them. But I have a girl on, on Instagram um, that we talk back and forth and show like plant things. And she sent me this video of a zebra haworthia in a pot that had to be about this big. And the pot was just stuffed full. And it was the most gorgeous thing I have ever seen. So I wanted to try and either you know, have something similar or like that. So I know this is a lot smaller scale, but it still gives me that feeling. And then I can kind of watch it grow. They're kind of a slow grower for me too, but I just like the look of the dark green with the white and then the terracotta popping off of that. So this next one just looks like a pot from here. This is another one of my science experiments. So I picked up this book a while ago called Root Nurture Grow, and it's all about propagating, growing from seed, doing things like that. And there was a section in here about growing a date palm just from the dates you would buy like in your organic section of the grocery store. So I had to try that. And basically what you do is you buy the dates. I think I did like five. That way I would have a you know better shot. Um, you peel them, you wash them. Or not peel them, but like you take the fruit part off. You wash them. Then you wrap them in a wet towel, put them in a bag and you put them in a dark cabinet for three to four weeks or whatever. And then they should by then have kind of split open and the root piece will start to grow out. When you get to that point, you plant them and then it could be another three months. But I started to get a little piece popping up. 
So it's just one. There are five seeds in here. So, so far only one is doing something. But I'm really excited to see if this is going to work and it's going to be possibly a date palm. And let me just show you what it will look like if it does turn into, I mean, if it survives, if it's going to be a date palm because I planted a date. But if it survives, I should have something that looks like that. And since I planted five of them, I should have, I could have up to five. So I'm really excited to kind of see. Okay, how this so this next guy is a common plant that I hadn't picked up until recently. This is an aglianema, and I believe this one is called Maria. Their common name is Chinese evergreen, but I liked the color on these leaves. So there is a version called a Pictum tricolor that's more camouflage, which I would love to find, but they sell for a fortune. I would need like a second, third, fourth job. So for now, this one is gonna hold me over. And I'm trying this in low light to see how it does. It is marketed as a low light plant, so I'm gonna kind of see how that works out. And this is just in a planter from TJ Maxx. This is actually one that I spray painted. It was a pink and white marble, which was really pretty. It just doesn't fit in with my style. I wanted it to be all white, so. Okay, and we're finally starting to wind down. I think I'm at the last, I've got a little list here that I keep looking at. I am at the last three, so I'm gonna show you. I have one right here in my cactus and succulent type window. I finally found an Amic Euphorbia, and this is an Amic Euphorbia variegata. This I found at Lowe's, and I found it on my birthday weekend, so I kind of conned the husband into getting it for me. Um, it was $20, which I think is really good for one of this size. So I'm just really excited for him, kind of see how he does here. And I've got him in the cactus window right next to the uh, Peruvian apple cactus. So it's kind of like the two columnar type ones side by side. So the next plant is this gorgeous staghorn fern that you can barely see me through. I picked this guy up at Lowe's. Now he was on clearance. He was in a hanging basket, originally 16. They marked him down to eight. I may have totally missed the mark here, but I think that as the new shield fronds grow, which are these kind of flat ones at the base that protect it, the older ones are, I think are supposed to turn brown and they kind of like die away as the new ones replace them and that the cycle continues. So I think that is why they marked it half off. I think they saw browning and they thought it's dying. Let's try and move it, see if somebody will buy it half off and save it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with this one. I think that is just its natural life cycle. I could be completely wrong, but from everything I've read, that's the impression I get. Now, a lot of times you see these guys mounted on the wall. For now, I just repotted it in terracotta. Maybe in the future I'll do that. I'm pretty sure that there's more than one in here. Because if you turn it, you can count a bunch of different shield fronds. So, I mean, I don't know. Right now, I kind of just like the way it looks bushy in here. And it's got a really nice fuzzy look to the leaves. So I just thought that was a really great find, especially for okay, $8. So that staghorn fern has been living on my front porch because he seems to be loving life out there with the humidity we've been having. This next one is on the back porch. I'm going to show you him. He is in a huge pot, so I'm just going to hold him up quick and show you. This is a philodendron xanadu. And I found this in the same Home Depot that I was telling you about down in Newton, New Jersey. And I love the shape of these leaves. So this is really similar to the one that I have on my back porch already. I have a large one called Philodendron Celloum or Philodendron Hope, which actually they've recently reclassified, I guess. And it is no longer actually a philodendron group. Um, but that's what I'm going to call it because if you see it in the store, that's what it's going to be marked as. It's going to be for now, marked as a philodendron celloum or hope. But this is almost like a smaller version of this. The leaves are a lot smaller in scale. So if you have a smaller space, this would be a good choice. I don't know how this one is going to grow, but just by the looks of it, I feel like it's not going to be one of the philodendrons that vines. I feel like it's going to be more of the bushy ones like the, the hope. So, I mean, right now it's on my porch, so it really doesn't matter. If it vined, it would be okay too. But I feel like this is just going to be one of those ones that get really large and bushy. So this was, I think it was $15. It was in one of those pots. I don't know the quartz or whatever. 
but it was one of those pots that's around $15 usually, so I thought that was a really great deal, and I've never seen one of these before. That's how they get me. If it's a plant that I have not seen in person, I'm more likely to buy it, where as if it's something I see all the time, I can kind of pass it up and think, oh, I'll see it again, it'll be around again. But something like this, that there's only one or two at that store, the store's an hour away, and I've never seen it in person before, I'm gonna bring it home. So, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I recently picked up. Um, I do wanna take you guys around and show you pretty much how I have them styled too. That won't be this video, because I feel like this video is already really long. Um, but uh, for all you plant people out there, I hope you enjoyed seeing this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.